hey here is my interesting uh, code snippet uh, which i thought of uh, sharing with you guys uh, because a couple of days ago i was uh, doing some uh, custom uh, uh, network uh, protocol uh, uh, via udp uh, as ipc uh, within a single uh, system as such so what i need to do is i need to share uh, some kind of statistics uh, or uh, uh, stats or values uh, to and fro uh, from one module to other module uh, these stats uh, can be uh, uh, bigger than uh, 65535 range so it may be bigger than 2 uh, bytes so what i need is i need uh, some 4 uh, byte data structure so that uh, something like unsigned 32 uh, bit uh, uh, <coughs> i'm sorry 32 uh, bit uh, value uh, and this way i have a big range but uh, when you when you do an ipc and uh, when you do a custom protocol design uh, you need to have four bytes allocated and you just need to uh, build the packet and send it across and then you need to pass the same and uh, you know get the data back as well. so this is a classic example say if you refer uh, Uh, ip header tcp header you may have various uh, values in this fashion you, you can have this uh, uh, sequence numbers and stuff like that so this method you can employ the same uh, you can use and then you can uh, build uh, your custom protocol and as well as you can uh, um, parse Uh, the incoming uh, uh, data uh, the bytes uh, the raw bytes and then you can get back the data structures uh, from the same as so let me just uh, uh, show you what i have done here so this is my uh, vm uh, inside i was uh, uh, doing the same uh, the specific uh, uh, sample code so that uh, once it runs i can just uh, take uh, uh, the you know parser and as well as uh, whatever the way i'm generating um, the packet i can just employ it in my main code so effectively this is uh, getting inside my uh, toffee uh, uh, data center uh, modules as well so you can see here uh, this is my udp socket uh, server and uh, client uh, there is nothing much uh, fancy about it i have already uh, written a dedicated uh, article about the same and also shot a video episode in case if you are interested you can uh, go through the same because this is quite different than uh, uh, what you find across uh, generally in the internet because uh, in general they talk about hello world and uh, how you can do a, uh, you know uh, how you can do a sample uh, udp socket code whereas in my example i have mentioned uh, how you can uh, send uh, something like a raw uh, packet bytes uh, and uh, how you can uh, you know communicate to and fro so we can uh, go back to this uh, vm mission uh, this is my uh, client code I don't want to highlight about uh, uh, the basic uh, the way uh, how I have done the UDP uh, socket code it's just not so important as it. so end of the day we just need to focus about how you kind of send data and receive it in the other end and how do you parse the values back as it. so so we can directly hop on over here so you can see here i'm using uh, uh, two variables uh, which are uh, uh, 32 bit type unsigned 32 bit type <laughs> there is something which i don't like in uh, c programming is this uh, confusion of uh, data types as well. so i just need something which represents uh, 32 bit uh, you can use uh, u32 in case if you are working in kernel space you can also do a typecast u u32 or else uh, you can directly use in this format uh, u32 uh, underscore t i think uh, it's been defined in uh, uh, std io or uh, some library in case if that uh, or uh, uni std uh, something like that in case if it is not added or uh, uh i think so it is uh, in case if that header file is not included it may throw some error as well. so with that uh, uh, you can see here this is my client the objective is not like to and fro communication objective is uh, uh, the client generates this data and just throws upon this data to the remote server so the server is like an aggregator it just collects this data and then puts it in a mysql database so the objective is that but before doing that i need to do some prototyping because as it is i can't support this crap in my main modules and screw up uh, you know those components as well. so what i did is uh, this way i have done a simple prototyping so you can see uh, a and b contains this uh, and uh, a and b uh, i'm hard coding with the uh, sample uh, data i'm instead of using uh, a uh, decimal uh, 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 convention i am directly using this hexadecimal convention because it is easy to debug in case if you need to do uh, h2nl or uh, 
n to h l or something like that or h to n s and n to, uh, you know uh, such you know uh, conversions uh, whereas uh, in the case of 32 bit it is h to n l and in the case of uh, <coughs> i'm sorry in the case of uh, 16 bit uh, it is uh, going to be h to n so before you do any such conversion you need to check whether it, it just works as it is as so is it required to use that or else it is just in the same format as so that is the reason i'm uh, doing this way so that uh, i know uh, like how it has been passed so in this uh, case i'm uh, passing a data uh, like this uh, the a contains in hexadecimal 0102 so effectively if you translate that into a decimal core uh, decimal uh, value it is going to have some large values so, so b uh, the same way it is containing these values uh, 1122 <coughs> in hexadecimal so what i'm doing is uh, this is my uh, buffer uh, in which uh, i'm constructing the packet uh, this buffer is effectively going to be 8 bytes so as you can see here i'm uh, hard coding it as uh, 8 bytes so you can consider this is like a fixed header uh, uh, protocol uh, if it is dynamic you can just uh, leave some more space or if it is tlv based you need even more space and then you need to construct that entire uh, you know tlv uh, 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 rows or uh, um, how to say tlv rows or uh, tlv uh, headers uh, you know so uh, this way i uh, i was uh, just uh, uh, you know converting this uh, into a pointer uh, of uh, i mean i'm saving that value directly to that uh, you know buffer uh, and before that i'm doing a type casting so that um, it accepts uh, uh, properly the same without any errors so, so i'm converting uh, the buffer into a pointer type of uh, u32 underscore t because that is a native type of this uh, variable a and then again i'm converting that to the value so effectively you can just store the value so nothing fancy about it as well so after that uh, to debug i'm printing this values a and b as it is so that we know uh, what we have stored in and uh, since i'm using this uh, format specifier uh, percentage u it prints it in you know decimal formats you can use it uh, uh, 04x or 08x or uh, such convention as well so in case if you are interested so right after that uh, to debug uh, i'm uh, dumping uh, the raw bytes of this uh, buffer so that we know exactly what the packet uh, contents are without even doing any wireshark uh, uh, capture of the same message so uh, after that we are uh, sending it uh, to the server and then we are closing the socket file descriptor because we don't need to get anything back from server as it is just you know one one directional communication you should understand always when you learn socket programming try first to understand where exactly it is used and try to understand the applications of the same just don't uh, uh, learn some examples which are you know it's just uh, you know something uh, uh, relevant for that you know bookish example so try to understand what could be the real world uh, use cases so such use cases will exist you don't need always by direct communication at all so coming back to the server code you can see here let us skip this whole portion uh, we can come here uh, uh, effectively I'm doing uh, uh, something similar to that since the server need to run all the time I'm uh, putting this uh, infinite while loop uh, please understand this is not a production code and uh, you should never use a code like this it needs to be a lot more secure in case if there is any uh, connection uh, uh, failures you can do retries and stuff like that in this code I'm not doing anything because it's just a simple prototype code my objective is to uh, test and sample this uh, you know overall parsing logic so what i'm doing is uh, in the while loop you can see you can ignore this uh, poll uh, effectively what it does is it just uh, uh, sees if the file descriptor is active and if nothing gets uh, it's just going to uh, you know loop around uh, so that uh, um, uh, it doesn't consume any cpu cycles <laughs> so, so after that you can see here i'm doing receive from so effectively i'm getting uh, the buffer uh, the large size in this case i'm passing is max buffer is uh, 1024 bytes so, so it's just uh, fairly large enough uh, to handle any type of data uh, coming from remote uh, udp clients so, so so we are receiving the same and uh, in this case uh, we are uh, first uh, printing the uh, bytes because we don't know the size of received uh, buffer i'm doing a for loop here unlike in the case of uh, 
udp client so you can see here i'm just doing a for loop so it is dynamic we still don't know it is eight bytes or what we have received from remote uh, you know client so in this case if you are interested you can employ even more custom headers and you can do uh, any sort of violation uh, you can just skip that particular uh, packet and then so on so on so on so that uh, you know your server doesn't crash when you try to parse so this is a way uh, this is a way uh, uh, one may expose any security issues in case um, if it is not properly done by uh, sending a wrong data to this unsuspecting server you can almost end up crashing the uh, process or if it is something closer to kernel space it can, it can even uh, lead to system crashes so so bear that in mind it is just uh, a sample what is my objective is to parse these values and then get the data um, values into the other uh, region as well. so so after that i am doing uh, the reverse of the same uh, i am doing uh, the buff of zero i am converting this uh, pointer uh, to the native uh, data type u32 underscore t and then that i am converting into a value so star of that whole stuff so it gets stored in the uh, variable a and then similar to that i am doing with the variable b and then i am printing the values so what we can do is uh, we can uh, i mean what i have done is uh, i just uh, compiled and then i ha have executed before shooting uh, this video so this is what i got so before seeing the server we can see the client part so you can see here the a and b whatever values i passed 0 and 0 to in hexadecimal and 1122 in hexadecimal corresponds to these decimal values 258 and 4386 so it came in this convention you can see the raw bytes 0 to 0 1 so it is coming in the reverse order so in the case of uh, uh, B, it is uh, 2211 and 00. So it is like you know, reverse order. So, so once it is, uh, you know, uh, it is executed, it has sent this uh, data to the server and uh, the server, uh, the UDP socket server have received the same and uh, it has, uh, 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 I mean, we are printing the raw bytes, you can see there and then uh, after that followed by which, uh, you know, the parsing works successfully. So, so you can just now try it once again you can see here it sends this and it receives and we can also confirm with a wireshark packet capture so that we will know exactly what is happening sudo wireshark so what is that uh, it interests me about ipc is uh, sometimes uh, this comes always and i suggest uh, leave about what ipc mechanisms uh, which linux support don't use uh, just because something <laughs> exists like message queues or something just because you have something about uh, uh, written in the books just don't take it as to try to use an ipc mechanism uh, which is easy to debug and uh, you know it is also transparent so that you know exactly what is happening inside the system and what what is the better way to do other than uh, you know so something like sockets so let us uh, capture the local host uh, so behind uh, uh, apart from this uh, transfer so there is lot more things are happening because this is my effectively this is my uh, main uh, toffee data center development and test system so it has other modules so, so that is the reason you can see here it has this mysql transfers and stuff like that so what we do is we go here and again try to send some couple of packets so let us stop this capture and go down and uh, we see where exactly it has captured yeah you can see here uh, there is a packet uh, from uh, 44 uh, triple four zero five so which means this is the source port of that uh, udp client uh, uh, and it has sent uh, this data you can see here uh, udp data uh, we just uh, okay this is not the one because the port number i have registered is uh, 5800 this is coming from uh, the toffee uh, data center module so this is not the one so we can skip that packet i'm sorry uh, and uh, we can see something which corresponds to this transfer so let us filter all this udp so you can see here in this uh, it shows uh, this 5800 uh, which is the port which i have registered you can go back and you can see here the port registered is uh, h2ns of you know 5800 so this is the port in which it has been registered so you can see here the client uh, 40103 uh, is the client source port of the udp uh, client 
and uh, it is sending to the server uh, port 5800 so it has this uh, raw data uh, you can see here value of a and value of b and it is totally 8 bytes over here so and it is going to the server and uh, each time you execute it as i said before there is nothing bidirectional about it it's just you know it's just an aggregator it's just going to the server the objective of server is just going to sit there ideal and any um, uh, log values it receives it it tries to parse and then does various calculations it calculates average and other stuff and then it just spits out into a database so uh, this is what i was uh, doing in uh, toffee data center because earlier it exists but I was just doing some architectural changes as, as part of the same. So you can see here each time you uh, run the client it sends this uh, uh, packet and this is the way it works. So in case if you are also doing any uh, network uh, stack development or uh, protocol development uh, I hope uh, this code snippet is going to uh, greatly help you of course you will see such examples in uh, throughout uh, Linux kernel source uh, every time they parse uh, you know IPv4 uh, headers and uh, UDP and uh, TCP headers and stuff like that but the problem is uh, the code will be a lot more sophisticated lot more cryptic not so simple like this but effectively this is what exactly it happens and also they do a uh, direct uh, uh, type casting to extract and uh, that is where the confusion starts because they do a struct uh, which uh, will be aligned prior so that uh, it gets these raw bytes and then immediately it tries to you know parse this uh, uh, raw bytes into an existing data structure and uh, you will not see uh, a manual parsing in this way so this is a manual parsing in the kernel source you find often is uh, an automated parsing where directly they get raw bytes and uh, they just do a typecast to an existing data structure and just boom it just happens so hope you guys uh, loved watching this video in case if you have any questions uh, discuss it uh, in my uh, discussion forum so you can go here uh, sometimes i do get uh, people uh, ask questions in youtube comments so, so please kindly use this uh, platform go to the discussion forum uh, we will have some kind of a track uh, i see still not many are uh, utilizing this platform uh, of course you can communicate in youtube comments but this is a nice platform you can share your screenshots uh, and whatever you ask it will uh, stay there as a record so that in future uh, we can again discuss or somebody else have any questions uh, they can also discuss or they can also send their views into the same so thank you very much once again for watching this video have a nice day bye bye